So in the last episode, we created this material, and uh, in today's episode, we're going to cast a ray straight from the camera into this object and move this hit point to wherever, whatever point the ray hits. So I created this empty ray cast from camera script. I'm dropping it onto my main camera. And uh, apparently it was already there, so I'm going to remove that. Now, uh, we want to fire off a ray when the user uh, left clicks on the mouse. So for that we can use the Unity input class. Input dot get mouse. And we could do mouse button, mouse button down, or mouse button up. We're going to use mouse button down because that only returns true on the first frame that the mouse goes down. Now we want to cast a ray directly through the camera, through the mouse, into whatever object is beyond the mouse. And uh, there's a few different ways we could go about that. I think the easiest way would be to use the camera screen point to ray function that's built into Unity. So for that, um, we're going to define a ray, and I don't want to allocate memory space for that every single frame because it's just unnecessary. So we're going to we're going to make a class level variable called ray. So ray gets camera dot main dot screen point to ray, and so that that's going to give us a ray going from the camera through a point, which is perfect. And uh, the point we want to go through is the mouse position. Easy enough. Now we want to actually fire the ray through the scene. So that's going to be physics dot physics dot raycast. And uh, there's 16 different options here. So why don't we look through these and choose the one that makes the most sense? I'm gonna go with that one. Uh, so we have a ray. We're gonna give it a out variable of type raycast hit, and uh, th that's what it's going to um, store its information in af after it does the raycast. And then we can also give it a, ma a max distance. So l let's give it something to put the information in. Let's just call it hit. So this raycast is going to get. First the ray, then the the thing to store the values in, and then a distance of 100 f. Now, if we hit something, we're gonna make it into this block. If it doesn't hit anything, it'll just skip over this and come back next frame. So let's say we hit something. Now we can just display what we hit. Uh, why don't we print the point that we collided with as well as the object that we hit. And uh, we have to do that through the collider dot object. There we go. Making progress. So now the script is attached to our camera. We're doing the raycast. So why don't we just try this out. Okay, so I'm clicking. You can see I got a point, and we hit the wall. Wall, we, wall, rear left. Wall, rear right. And any point on the sphere itself. That's great. So I'm now I'm debating. Um, do I want to control the actual material on this object through our camera script, or or do we want to separate those those behaviors into two separate scripts? I think that the separation of concerns is probably a lot more practical long term. Um, but since this is just a demo, uh, I, I think I'll, I'll I'll go the the long term route. We're going to create a separate script for the sphere that accepts the raycast hit. Um, so, what do we want to call this? Receives... 
Apparently, I'd, I I before E except after C. So that receives. Rece is that, that doesn't look right. Receives Raycast. Okay, whatever. I might have spelled that wrong. I can't tell. Okay, so we're, we're dropping that on the sphere. And uh, it's not there, so we're going to try again. Receives Raycast. There we go. And uh, why don't we open that up in Visual Studio. Now, on this on this side of things, we need to get a reference to the material so that we can pass the vector into it. So, we can... Uh, the material lives on top of the mesh renderer. So let's get a reference to that and then use that to reference the shield. So, I'm going to define mesh renderer renderer and material instanced material now there's two ways we could assign this in unity I could drag the sphere onto itself and give it a reference if this would ever compile um, theoretically there should be a property showing up here that we could drag the sphere into and then and then that would make it grab its own mesh render um, but it's it's not even showing up so we, we can ignore that that route um, my preferred route is to grab the render through the script itself uh, I, try, I try not to link things together using the UI as much as possible um, I just it, it just feels too messy I would rather I would, I would just much rather do everything on the coding side because it just feels cleaner to me and uh, you don't end up with quite so many weird relations that are hard to track. Um, so I'm going to do render gets game object dot get component, and the component that we're grabbing is the mesh renderer. And then from the renderer, we're going to say instance material equals renderer dot. I think it's just material. Shared material. No, we just want the first one. Sweet. And uh, you know, now that I think about it, um, I think that these are defaulting to private, and that's why they're not showing up in the inspector. All right, there we go. So you can see that the sphere uh, found the reference to the mesh renderer as well as the material itself. So now that we have the reference, we can say instance to material dot set vector. Now this is a built-in function within Unity. Um, it, it plays nicely with the Amplify Shader materials, uh, but you don't actually have to use an Amplify Shader material to use this. Um, and so, so the first thing we pass in is the name ID. And uh, I don't remember what we called it. And I think I'm just going to copy and paste the shield and the, the material and the shader from, last, um, from the last folder. And uh, of course, it does not want to. Copy, paste. So we've got material, material meta. Okay, copy all four of those into number three. All right, and then I'll drop shield one onto the sphere here. Um, uh, I just like having all of these folders uh, consistent and unique to the episodes. All right, sorry about that, guys. Um, back on track. So if I click on Material 1, let's see. The value that we're feeding in is hit position. So the property name is underscore hit position. See right there. Close that. Go back to Visual Studio. 
Go away. Sweet. Oh, sweet. It already starts changes too. Oh, that's nice. Oh, okay. R wrong file. Uh, set vector. So we've got uh, hit position. And then we're actually going to pass it the vector, which is... Oh, it did erase our changes. No, never mind. Wait, what's happening right now? Oh, okay. Uh, sorry. I got a little sidetracked there. Uh, so we need to pass the actual hit point from the camera to the received ray cast. Now, the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to use a broadcast. So the... Um, and th there's a few downsides to using the broadcast. It, it is a little bit slower. Um, and you know, actually, since we have a reference to the object right here, um, why don't we avoid the broadcast? Instead, we're actually going to get a reference to the receives raycast script and, and then call the method directly through that. So we're going to say void uh, set hit position. And uh, we can comment this out for now. And uh, when we call this method, we're just going to have to pass in a vector 3 called hit position. Good enough for me. And uh, so we need to grab a reference to receives raycast. And also, this is going to have to be public in order for us to call it from a different file. From a different class. So now we're going to say receives raycast equals and then we're going to say hit.collider.game object. So that's that's whatever we hit dot get component. And that'll be of type receives raycast. And uh, it's not happy that I defined this like that, so I think I just need to typecast it. Uh, I'm a little bit rusty with C Sharp. I, I usually program in PHP at work. Okay, so now we should have a reference to the script if it existed on the object that we hit. Um, obviously, if we hit the wall, it's not going to have this script on it. So, in that case, we should just check if we have a raycast hit. And if we do, or I'm sorry, we should check if we have a receives raycast. And then if we do, we know for sure that we hit something that we can damage. And uh, we know for sure that whatever we hit has this method. So we're going to say, whatever we hit, set the position. And we're going to set it to hit dot point. There we go. And uh, I think that looks good. I think that that's going to work. So once we get over to this, why don't we just print hit position. Hit position. Ah, I can't type. Hit position. Sweet. Does that look right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. And we're not printing anything from this anymore. So if we click on it, um, let's clear the console, click out here, nothing happens, and then if we click on this guy, now it's actually printing. If I clear again, nothing happens, I'm clicking, clicking, clicking. So things are working as expected, that's great. And uh, now that we know we have the right position, uh, ideally, we would just pass it in here like this. Um, there is a problem with that, though. As, as I pointed out in the last video, if we look at this node setup, um, this is in local space to the object. I mean, uh, well, th this this is whatever we give it. We c we could give it we could give it whatever space we want here, um, but this one specifically is in local space. So even though the object was scaled up by 3, it's still um, 
negative 0.5, 0.5, negative 0.5, 0.5, and 0 in the middle. And uh, so that so that the local space and the world space are going to clash if we do it like this. And so let me think for a second. Um, Uh, I think that I will pause the video here, and uh, I just want to make sure I'm doing this right. I, I know th th there's a really easy way in Unity to convert this to world space. Um, I just want to make sure I do it right the first time on the video. So give me one second. All right, I'm back. So we're going to use the inverse transform point method, and uh, I think I'll do it on a separate line. So we're going to say vector three gets. Uh, I guess we have to name it vector three. Uh, hit vector gets and now we want the local object so we can just say game object dot transform dot inverse transform point I believe and that's okay so that's going to transform a position from world space to local space that's perfect that's exactly what we wanted and uh, now we just give it a position, and that's hit position. And now we just have to feed that here. And uh, I haven't tested this yet, but I'm pretty sure we nailed it. Jump over to the game view. Aha, it worked. So now you can see I'm clicking on the object and it's moving the hit point. Beautiful. Alright, so I'm going to cut this video off here. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.